Hello, my name is Frank Martone. I work for the University of Miami. I'm with the Facilities Department. I am a Facilities Project Coordinator. I'm going to, uh, I don't have much experience with doing these videos, but I'm going to attempt to make this selfie video. I'm more business than I am about social media and things like that. Anyway, it was very interesting. Everything about what I learned about the computers, I actually didn't have any idea of the beginning of the computers. My, uh, my recollection, recollection of computers started probably with, uh, I think it was IBM, like a DOS machine that I had. There was no internet, and I used it to play Pong. So the operating system was DOS, all the commands were in DOS, and I played, it was kind of a green screen, you know, the, the, everything on it was, it was a black screen with like little green, the letters were in green, uh, the Pong was played in green. Uh, the only thing that I really remember was one of those videos where they were talking about the Enigma. I remember that video, but not in the sense of the computer. It was something, some kind of like war propaganda or something like that, where they were talking about how they broke the German code. But no mention of computers or anything like that. Just that same video that they showed, but in a different aspect. So with that said, uh, let's move on to the PowerPoint and the research I did on the computers. The IBM Watson computer is a question answering computer developed in IBM's Deep QA project by a research team led by David Ferrucci. It uses what is known as cognitive computing and was named after IBM's first CEO, Thomas J. Watson. What I found a little unusual in my research was that it was developed to answer questions on the game show Jeopardy. In 2011, it competed against two top winners of the game show and won, which means that its four terabytes of data surpassed the memory of the two men it competed against. Watson is called cognitive because it observes the data, interprets it, then evaluates the data to make a decision. It understands unstructured data in natural language. It actually understands the context of the information and learns the language. What was probably most notable was that 90% of nurses in the field of lung cancer use guidance from Watson in decision making. This is what is called cognitive computing. A corpus of knowledge is assembled for Watson. The content is curated by humans and Watson then ingests the curated corpus of knowledge. Watson is then trained by human experts on questions and answers. Watson is constantly updated by humans and experts in many fields are able to make better evidence-based decisions. What is most notable about Watson is that it learns, adapts, and gets smarter. In December 1999, IBM announced a U.S. 100 million research initiative for a five-year effort to build a massively parallel computer to be applied to the study of biomolecular phenomena such as protein, protein folding. The project had two main goals, to advance our understanding of the mechanisms behind protein folding via large-scale simulation and to explore novel ideas in massively parallel machine architecture and software. Major areas of investigation included how to use this novel platform to effectively meet its scientific goals, how to make such massively parallel machines more usable, and how to achieve performance targets at a reasonable cost through novel machine architectures. The initial design for Blue Genie was based on an early version of the Cyclops 64 architecture designed by Monty Deneau. The initial research and development work was pursued at IBM's T.J. Watson Research Center and led by William R. Pulleybank. The UNIVAC-1, or Universal Automatic Computer-1, was the first commercial computer produced in the United States. It was designed principally by J. Presper Eckhart and John Mouchley, the inventors of the ENIAC. 
Design work was started by their company, Eckhart Mousley Computer Corporation, and was completed after the company had been acquired by Remington Rand, which later became, became part of Sperry and now Unisys. In the years before successor models of the Univac 1 appeared, the machine was simply known as the Univac. The first UNIVAC was accepted by the United States Census Bureau on March 31, 1951, and was dedicated on June 14 of that year. The fifth machine, built for the U.S. Atomic Energy Commission, was used by CBS to predict the results of the 1952 presidential election. With a sample of just 1% of the voting population, it famously predicted an Eisenhower landslide while the conventional wisdom favored Stevenson.